Although her college entrance test indicated that she should be a funeral home director, <clears throat> Kathy Dempsey instead chose a career about helping live people live amazing lives. Kathy Dempsey is president of Keep Shedding, Inc., and founder of the Shedding Revolution. She has been voted top five speaker for the last two years by speaking.com. And although she's highly respected in her field, most people question her strange ongoing relationship with some guy named Lenny. So please join me in welcoming Kathy Dempsey. Kathy? Anyone seen Kathy? I um, said 315, didn't we? I don't know where our speaker is. She's got to be around here somewhere. Oh my God, the lights are going out. Hey. Lenny? Has anybody seen Lenny? Excuse me, sir. Have you seen Lenny? You have not. Mm. Uh. Sir, have you seen Lenny? No, I haven't. You haven't? No, I haven't. Oh, all right. OK. All right. Still keep looking for him. Got to be here somewhere. Um, OK. I, 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 I um, guess that's her. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Um, have you seen Lenny? No. You haven't. Uh, what's your name? Ann. 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 If I showed you a picture of Lenny, would that help? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Well, let's see if we can find a picture. There's Lenny. Oh, geez. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's missing. And, and I think I know what happened to him. How many of you have heard of Patch Adams or Doc Hollywood? You ever seen that movie? He's the doc who helps kids take care of their health. Well, I was speaking at a conference, and Patch was the luncheon keynote speaker, and I was the closing keynote speaker, and we got to meet at a really nice reception the night before. And he said, Kathy, have you taken Lenny to the doctor? It's like, no, Patch. He's a lizard. He said, well, he's your partner, and you travel all over the world speaking with him. Don't you think it could be a good idea if you found out he's healthy? I said, Patch. He's a plastic lizard. <laughs> he said, Kathy, we have plastic surgeons. <laughs> it's like, oh, come on, Pat. That's ridiculous. He says, hey, I have an appointment with one of the best docs in Scottsdale, Arizona, where you live. So there's Lenny's in the blood pressure cuff waiting for the doc to come in. So Dr. Doug Lakin comes in with his lizard shirt, and he's giving Lenny an exam, and the phone rings. And Lenny said, I want to pick up the call. So I said, all right, Lenny. So Lenny picks up the call. It's like, Lenny, you and Kathy, you've got to be in Houston. I mean, now you've got to be there for the Texas Workforce Conference. Come on. And Lenny's like, Texas Workforce Commission? He said, I love Texas Workforce Commission. He said, I'll drive all the way to Houston. It's like, Lenny, you can't drive your pink Barbie Jeep all the way from Scottsdale, Arizona to Houston and make it in time. Come up with a different idea. He said, OK, OK, I'll use my frequent fire miles. <laughs> so rumor has it that he arrived late last night into the airport. Now, we know this to be true because he was spotted earlier this morning outside the hotel. <laughs> And then he wandered in, and wow, he saw this really cool exhibit that was all made out of like gingerbread. If you haven't seen it, you got to check it out downstairs. And, 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 and then he was roaming around, and he, and he saw the sign, the 20th Annual Texas Workforce Conference. He knew he was in the right place. And then he got up to the desk, and like, you all gave him a badge and registered him in. I mean, you rock here in Texas. 
And, and, and then he had the welcome committee going, yay, Lenny, you're here. And, 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 and then he ran into Don, and uh, Don's like, uh, who are you, Lenny? What's going on? And uh, you know, if you, if you want to find out where everybody else is, you're going to have to find Larry because Larry is going to introduce you, and if you find Larry, you'll find everybody else. So Lenny looked around, and he looked around, and he looked around, and looked around this entire hotel, and finally, he found Larry. <laughs> now, I'm willing to sell this for blackmail right after the break here at the book signing table back out at Barnes & Noble, but uh, there's Larry. So, um, <laughs> We know he's here somewhere. So if someone would please turn on the lights so we could find Lenny. He's what? Oh, actually, that's his girlfriend, Liz. <laughs> good guess, good guess, good guess. I, I tell you what we're going to do. I have a copy of my Shed or Your Dead book, and I'm willing to give it to the first person who can find Lenny. Now, he likes to hide under chairs. That's where he most likely hangs out. So if you look really good underneath your chair real well, maybe the chair next to you if it's open, and see if somebody could please find Lenny. Whoa! Okay. All right. Wow. Excellent, excellent, excellent. W what's your name? Larry Dimmerville. Your name's Larry, too. I'm Larry, too. Oh, excellent. We just it went from Larry to Larry. Yeah, it could it, be dangerous. Something. It could be dangerous. Uh, excellent, Larry. Uh, well, thank you very much for taking care of Lenny. Let's give Larry a hand. Congratulations. Wow. Larry, Larry, Larry. I wonder if everybody's named Larry here. I don't know. Well, Lenny, we are here. Well, this is Lenny. Can you all say good afternoon to Lenny? <laughs> you see, you know now, Lenny travels with me all over the country. And, and um, uh, he said, when you get with a group in Houston at the conference, will you share with them my favorite story? You see, Lenny has a favorite story, and it comes from one of my journal entries. Because at the end of the day, I journal, and I identify two things. One is, what's the lesson that I learned? Because whether it's been my best day, wahoo, or my worst, oh no, and sometimes our worst days can be our best lessons, can't they? There's always something to be learned. Well, this came from one of my journal entries, and it was dated July 29th, 1998. It was 7 o'clock in the morning, and I rushed into a quarterly ethics meeting at the hospital. Well, I ran into a friend of mine. He was actually one of my strange friends. Does uh, anybody here have any strange friends? <laughs> All right. Is anybody in here a strange friend? <laughs> oh, wow. Hundreds of more hands went up on that. Well, David was strange, at least in my opinion, because he owned a pet snake. And I said, good morning, David. How are you, and how's your snake? And he said, I'm fine, Kathy. My snake is fine, but my lizard is dead. He said, it didn't shed its skin, Kathy. That's how lizards grow. And if they're not shedding, they're not growing, and they die. I said, wow. I said, David, what can we learn as humans from the lizard? And he said, Kathy, we as humans grow physically and mentally and spiritually, and if we don't shed, if we don't grow, we die. I said, David, what might old skin represent? Maybe old habits? Maybe negative attitudes, maybe unhealthy relationships. Simultaneously, it was like a light bulb went off for both of us. Shed or you're dead. Shed or you're dead. Now, I'm going to challenge you during the next hour or so to shed a little skin. Now, I'm looking out here, and I don't want you shedding all your skin, because you got some pretty good-looking skin. And your skin is your knowledge and experience and all the things that have brought you to where you are today. But in order to grow, both personally and professionally, we need to shed a little bit. 
And shedding is a two-part process. The first is letting go of the old, all those things that may be holding you back or no longer serve you. And the second part of shedding is taking on the new, all the new things that you're here at the conference this week to learn and then go back and implement. So I'm going to be a little tied up for the next hour, and I was wondering, would there be anybody here in this room that would be willing to take care of Lenny for me? Oh, right down here. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Okay. And what's, let me see. What's your name? Uh, Martha Tyrell. Martha. 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 Now, Martha, um, have you ever taken care of a lizard before? Yes, I have. You have? <laughs> Did it live? No. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> it didn't live? You think so? Okay. Well, what's your name? Marilyn. Marilyn. Now, Marilyn, have you taken care of a lizard before? No, but I'm dying to learn. Are you dying to learn? Yes. You're dying to learn? I hope you don't die. I hope you don't die. But Okay, so you'd be willing to take care of Marilyn, right? Yes. Marilyn, okay. I need to take you, tell you that, um, Marilyn, Lenny just got out of therapy. Uh-oh. Do you want to know what happened? Uh-huh. Yes. We were actually at State Farm headquarters in Bloomington, Illinois, mm-hmm. and Lenny was kidnapped because they thought he was the gecko geico. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they thought he was a spy under their corporate headquarters. So anyway, um, it got a little dicey, ran some notes. Um, Lenny actually went into therapy. The doctor said, um, Marilyn, it was a light case of P- TSD. TSD, yes, 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 yes. But actually, there's good news, Marilyn. Lenny is out of therapy, and he's off the Prozac. Yes. So, um, so let's give Marilyn a hand for taking care of Lenny. All right. Wow. Welcome to the shedding revolution, where the mantra is shed or you're dead. And our focus is going to be for three things with the Shedding Revolution. And that is to learn it first, and then to share it next, and then to live it. All three things are important components, as most of you know, many of you in the learning and education field. You can can walk out of here, and if you learn nothing, you know, do nothing else from what you've learned, then it's been a waste of our time and resources. So we're going to ask you to learn it, share it, live it. So Lenny is going to be here as a reminder for us to shed. So when you see Lenny, I want you to think of the word shed, all right? So here's going to be the signal um, for that. When I want to hold my hand up like this and go like this, that means to say the word shed, okay? So let's practice it. Ready? Excellent, excellent, you got, you got the mantra down, all right. So we're gonna learn it, we're gonna share it, and we're gonna live it. There's seven key principles of a highly successful shedders that we're gonna cover today, and let me give you an overview. The first is to know you always, always have a choice. To embrace certain uncertainty. To shed the fear of fear and to be able to adapt to different people, places, and situations. To show up and be in the now. To welcome every experience, every single one without judgment. And the last is to live life fully alive. So are you ready to take our journey? Because we're gonna learn how to Excellent, excellent, all right. Well, the DNA of a healthy culture of the shedding revolution has a three-legged stool. There's three legs to it. The first is skills, the second is motivation, and the third is accountability. And all three are critically important in the shedding revolution. No No workforce can thrive unless their people can shed. And the shedding revolution is going to ignite your workforce with the skills and motivation to embrace and celebrate inevitable change, which will produce higher profits, higher productivity, 
and a more positive workforce. You know, I was speaking at a conference a while back, and an um, executive of a 10,000 employee company got up to introduce me, and he said, the number one skill we are hiring for today is the ability to learn on the fly. Now, that would have been unthinkable 10 years ago. You know, where'd you go to school? What's your work resume? Can you use a computer? I mean, what, but not the ability to learn on the fly. Now, what that executive was saying was the ability to embrace change, the ability to, to shed is paranoid, because what we're hiring you for today is probably not what we're going to ask you to do tomorrow. And that successful workers will embody temporary as the norm and quickly detach from ineffective roles, ideas, or the way we've always done it. Why do 75% of all change efforts fail? Because people lack the skills and the motivation to embrace the priorities and the goals of the organization to move forward. How many of you ever used a typewriter before? Raise your hand. How many use one now? One person has their hand raised. Okay. I don't know if I want to even ask why, but one person hasn't shed. All right. So um, why has the rest of us shed the typewriter? It's antiquated. It doesn't serve us anymore. I remember typing my graduate thesis in, in 1990 on it. But we have now embraced technology and shed the typewriter. And the seed of shedding revolution is innovation and curiosity. Somebody had to ask, what if I didn't have to type this over again? What if I could save this? What if I didn't have to use whiteout? <laughs> Do you remember whiteout? Yeah. So you want to build a workforce, and you want to train a workforce that is curious, that asks, what if, what if, what if? Because change can be fun. Change can be innovative. Change can be exciting if you have the right culture with the skills and the motivation and the accountability. So we're going to talk about several of those things today. Anybody ever seen this uh, um, Harvard Business Review cover? It was a while back. Change faster. Any of us ever been asked to do that recently? I mean, really? I mean, we're going to look back on 2016 and think, boy, those were the good old days. Some experts say you will experience cha more change this year than your entire grandparents did for their life. So buckle your seatbelt. And I tell you, I was uh, walking through the Atlanta airport. Actually, I was probably running through the Atlanta airport on the newsstand and saw that cover of the Harvard Business Review on the newsstand. And I just, I'm sitting there just laughing, thinking, what are the chances that Harvard Business Review would put Lenny's great-great-grandfather on the cover? <laughs> wow. We're going to share with you today three foundational R's of shedding that'll help you deal with any challenging situation at work or in life. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to find a partner. So here's I've got two criteria for your partnership, and, and a lot about what you do in this conference is, is all about partnerships. So, so let's form a partnership here. The first is I'm going to give you 10 seconds to find your partner. Okay, 10 seconds. I know you can do it, all right? Now the second, okay, here's the second criteria. All right, all right, all right, here we go. Here we go. The second criteria is your partner has to be sitting at least 10 feet away from where you're currently sitting. So when I say put all your stuff down, I'll say ready, shed, shed. Go and stand upright by your partner. Ready, set, shed. Uh, 
Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Everybody, here we go. Shed. 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 Again. Shed. 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 Excellent. Excellent. All right. Now, does anybody need a partner? Anybody raise your hand? Need a partner? Do you see any hands raised? Okay, a couple right over there. Join each other there. All right, excellent. Now, your first assignment as your partner is to decide which one of you wants to be the letter A and which one of you wants to be the letter D, very quickly. Let me hear, let me hear a big wahoo from all the A's. Wahoo! Woo! Awesome, awesome. All right, how about D's? Wahoo! Wahoo! Whoa! <laughs> Some of you D's, wow, you're so excited. You have no idea what a D is, but you're excited. All right, okay. All right, so I need to talk to the A's first. Now, A's, listen up here. Now, you've just arrived in Houston, and you've arrived at this beautiful Hilton, and you've taken the escalators up, and you've passed that really cool gingerbread, and, 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 and you've walked down to the registration area, and you're getting ready to get your badge, and all of a sudden, you're looking. Oh. It can't be. It is. It's your best friend from high school. I mean, what are the chances that you're here at the Texas Workforce Conference and you've met your best friend? I mean, you've been looking for them for 30 years. <laughs> you've looked everywhere. You've looked on Class Reunion, you've looked on LinkedIn, you've looked on Facebook, and what are the chances they're here in Houston at the Texas Workforce Conference? Woohoo! Now, D's, you never really liked them. <laughs> you didn't. You were so glad when high school was over and you got to shed them. But I mean, what are you going to do now? I mean, you're at a professional conference. They are coming at you. You're going to have to deal with it. So in just a minute, you're going to have your 30-year high school reunion. Now, A's, I have some instructions I'm going to flash up on the screen. D's, if you'll turn around and face the back wall for just about 10 seconds. Okay, A's, here are your instructions. Okay, can you do this? Can you do it passionately? Awesome. Okay, come back around D's face to face with your partner. And when I say ready, set, Shed, it is time for your 30-year class reunion. Ready, set, shed! Are you okay? <laughs> I mean, feeling a little uncomfortable? 
I mean, just a little personal space issues going on here. Now, we laugh. We laugh. But how many of us know somebody that we work with who just won't let it go? Yeah! I mean, they keep holding on and holding on and holding on you, and you're saying, shed, lady, shed. <laughs> we as humans have a tendency to over-attach. So what is something that you need to shed that you're over-attached to? Now, hold that thought. I hate to even announce this to the A's, but it is time to say goodbye to your partner. Great job! Okay, here we go. Ready? Shed, 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 shed. Okay, everybody with their hands up. Again, shed, 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 shed. Awesome, awesome. Now, I, I will tell you, uh, Dees, I will tell you, here were the instructions that your partner had up on the screen. So they did a really, 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 really good job. Go A's, go A's. The first. The first R of shedding is to release the attachment. Release the attachment. We have a tendency to overattach to things, as we said. Now, how many remember being born? Raise your hand. Okay, nobody's got their hand up. All right, uh, do, do you have a little button in the middle of your stomach? Okay, if you do, that's evidence. I mean, you were there. You were there, okay, so you were there. So I'd like for you to imagine that you're back in your mother's womb. Now think about it. It's warm, secure, and pa-pum, 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 pa-pum. When you think about it, you didn't have to worry about paying the rent or the mortgage. I mean, you had a nine-month rent-free lease. I mean, you didn't have to worry or, or about going to the grocery store or the kids saying, Mom, what are we going to have for dinner? I mean, you had a 24-7 infusion of nutrition. I mean, you didn't have to worry about bosses. You didn't have to worry about bills. You didn't have to worry about budgets. You didn't have to worry about deadlines. You didn't have to worry about teenagers. I mean, bottom line, life was good. And what happened nine months later? You were evicted. <laughs> Mom decided to downsize. <laughs> and fetal foreclosure began. Now I will submit to you that was your first major shedding experience of this lifetime. From the time you were born to the time you die, you will continue to go through a series of attachments and detachments, attachments and detachments, attachments and detachments. Now, they're not those physical ones like having that cord. It's actually that physical cord, but they're the emotional ones. And your ability to deal with the emotional detachments is critical to your success and your happiness. Shedding is the number one most essential skill for work and for life. So what do we get attached to? Well, we as humans, three really top areas. The first is roles. We get attached to our roles. You know, I, I'm a manager. I'm a director. 
I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a vocational rehab. I'm an educator. I'm an executive. We get attached to our roles. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. We will play a role with everyone, both significant and insignificant in our lives, but we need to realize that all roles will end one day. Your current role is gonna end one day. Either you're gonna end it, or somebody's gonna end it for you. And some of us know what that's like. So what are you doing today to prepare for your next role? Things. We like our things. I mean, we like our stuff, right? It's like my car and my house and my office and, 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 and my pen. You got my pen. I think you got my pen. I mean, even the littlest things, right? Anytime you hear the word my in front of something, it's a clue that there's a little attachment there. And the last is beliefs. Traditions. This is the way we've always done it. So on a continuous basis, we need to look at those things that we need to shed and embrace from the new. So one of the biggest questions when I travel around is, Kathy, how do you know when to shed? I and mean, that can be difficult, especially in this day and time. Well, there's five fil filter questions. We're going to focus on one of them right now. And that is, is it causing suffering for the organization, for others, or for me? If that pain scale is going up, eight, nine, ten, it may be time to think about shedding. Now, change is a loss of some kind. And it doesn't matter whether you work in an organization that has 10 people or 10,000 people. When it all comes down to organizational change, it all comes down to what is the personal loss that I'm experiencing. And that needs to be identified. And it needs to be dealt with. So here are the stages of change. There's five of them. I'd like for you to call them out when I flash them up on the screen. The first is loss. The second is anger. The third is discouragement. The fourth is acceptance. And the fifth is celebration. Now you may say, well, I kind of recognize some of those stages of loss or maybe grief or change, but um, celebration? Yes. Celebration is an important important part of shedding. It's a healthy ritual that will accelerate shedding. Do you know you celebrate the most painful day of your life every single year? Some guy said to me recently, my anniversary? <laughs> Good thing his wife wasn't sitting next to him. I said, no, sir, your birthday. Now, why would we celebrate the most painful day of our life every single year? Because it gave us life. It gave us life. I mean, most of our love are our moms, but wouldn't it be kind of a drag to, to, to be around life being attached to a cord? It gave us freedom. Now, in a perfect scenario, whenever you would experience change, you would immediately leap from change to celebration. Your job is being eliminated. Woohoo! <laughs> probably not going to get there that quick, huh? No, 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 no. You're probably going to have to go through some of these stages. And it's actually healthy to go through some of these stages. Is it OK to experience loss? Sure, especially if you loved your job. How about anger? And expressing that in an appropriate way. And has any of us been discouraged? You got to work and, and like things didn't turn out exactly how we had planned for the day. Yeah. But the goal is to move to acceptance and ultimately to celebration. Now, 
One of the biggest philosophical differences that I have from all other change management experts that I'm exposed to is I believe that you need to celebrate your success in advance. I go into organizations all the time and I'll sit down with the leader or the CEO and I'll say, so where do you want to be in two years or three years? And they'll say, you know, I, 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 I want to win the Baldrige Award or I want to be named by Fortune Magazine as the top 100 best places to work. Or, and they'll give me these ideas and I'll say, well, great. I said, let's celebrate it. Let's throw a party. So we'll catapult into 2018 and we'll have the big party and some organizations have balloon drops and confetti machines and sparkling grape juice and, and, and noise blowers and music and award ceremonies just like we had earlier today. And we go into the future and celebrate it as if it has already happened. Now you may say, Kathy, that's a little out there. You know, I got a call just about a week ago from a CEO up in Minneapolis. And he said, Kathy, you know, we were going through um, what we did this last year. And he said, we've had our most successful year in our 56 year history. We have gone from $88 million in revenue to $122 million in revenue in one year. And he said, you know, I thought that that exercise that we did last year at the annual meeting with all the employees, I was not questioning that, but I believe it was the catalyst that we needed to take us where we are today. And we've already stomped out the number two Goliath GE, and we are on our way to being number one in the marketplace. Wow. It works. It works organizationally, and it works personally too. Whatever you want as your goal, celebrate it in advance. Because when you can program the unconscious, it doesn't know of reality from truth, the mind believes what you tell it. And it will accelerate your success. The Shadding Revolution's five stages of change doesn't happen linearly like one, two, three, four, five. It may be more like an EKG where it's ups and downs and you may be in discouragement and then you're celebrating, and then you're lost, and then you're angry, and then you're accepting and you're up and down. And that's really healthy. The key is don't get stuck. Anybody ever work with anybody who's stuck in anger? Yeah. What does that do to a work environment? Very toxic. Now, the number one biggest barrier to shedding is fear. 95% of people say it's the number one thing that holds them back in life. And I had the wonderful privilege of going in and speaking with the Disney Corporation a while back. And when I spoke, after they took me on a really cool backstage tour, I was like, wow, neat, see backstage Disney. And do you know what? Walt Disney was afraid of mice. <laughs> Think about that. Walt's afraid of mice? So what does Walt do? Well, Walt says, well, maybe I can make my fear a little less scary. Maybe I can make a, a playful face and, and, and big ears and I'll call my fear Nikki. And Walt embraced his biggest fear and transformed it into his biggest professional success. And you can too. You know, most people find it hard to believe that I was afraid of speaking. Well, my boss, she would sit me down every Friday morning at 9 o'clock at our meeting, and she would say, Kathy, you've got to talk in meetings. There's only five people here. <laughs> I'm like, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, and what do I do? And, and I had to embrace my biggest fear in order to do what I've been placed on this earth to do. So I'm telling you, if I can do it, you can too. Embrace your fears. 
because there is consequences of not embracing your fears. How many have ever been to Disney before? That's like 99% of the room. Can you imagine having your family vacations, your, your childhood memories, all stripped away because one person didn't embrace his fear? If Walt hadn't embraced his fear, there would be no Disney. So we need to embrace our fear because there is consequences of not. So what do we do? It's scary. We talked a few minutes ago about embracing certain uncertainty. I mean, now more than ever, there's so much uncertainty in the workforce. Well, the key is to take action. Take action. Because fear plus action equals courage. And it will take courageous people to lead us into the workforces of the future. Don't. Get stuck. The second R of shedding is to reframe the situation. Now, some situations may initially appear overwhelmingly negative, but, but given enough time, most of us come around and say, you know, that was a blessing in disguise. I mean, think back on that day that somebody cut your cord. I mean, you were probably thinking, I'm having a really, really, really bad day. I mean, think about it. Where are you going to eat? Where are you going to sleep? I mean, it's cold out here. Put me back in. I mean, all kinds of things are probably flooding your mind. But now, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 plus years later, you've been able to reframe. You've been able to say, that wasn't my worst day. That was my best day. So reframing is seeing the situation from the most positive light. So you want the ability to have a short reframe quotient. You want to hire people that have a short reframe quotient. You want to train people to have a short reframe quotient. So instead of it taking you five years to get over the fact that somebody canceled your Zumba class, <laughs> maybe it only takes you five seconds. Now, there is a barrier that gets in the way. It's a syndrome. It's called above-the-neck constipation. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. You, you know what that is? It's that negativity, that stinking thinking, and it can consume a workforce. So Lenny's been working on this problem, and he has a solution. And his solution is a mental enema. Yes, a mental enema. So, there are actually five parts to the mental enema formula. We're going to focus on one of them today. And that is to stop complaining. Do you know the average person complains 15 to 30 times a day? 34 minutes on Monday. and 4.5 hours a week. Think about what it would be like if your workforce could shed complaining. Wow. Now, I have this little green bracelet here. And, um, Let's see, I'd like to give it, what's your name, ma'am? Kimberly. Kimberly, Kimberly, all right. Can you tell me, Kimberly, what this says? This is an eye test. Okay. I'm allergic to negativity. Okay, I'm allergic to negativity, all right. Now, um, I would like you to put this on. Okay, Kimberly, there you go, all right. So now, instantaneously, you are allergic to negativity. Exactly, right. Now, have you had your physical Kimberly this year yet? You already have, all right. So when you go back next year and they want you to update your medical record, you want to tell them you are now allergic to negativity. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, all right. So um, let's say, Kimberly, I'm coming up to you, and uh, I'm saying, Kimberly, 
you know what? They cut my budget. Okay. Kimberly, yeah. <laughs> are you listening to me? They cut my budget. And the consequences of cutting your budget. Oh, God. <laughs> They're going to cut your soup. That's what's going to happen next. You're just smiling. Fine, fine. Kimberly, Kimberly, Kimberly. All right, okay. What's your name here? Terry. 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 And we're going to give you a bracelet here. All right, all right. Now, now, if I start to complain to you, all right, here's the code word actually for all of us. If anybody complains to you, you want to tell them to shed up. Okay? Okay, got it? Okay? You want to tell them to shed the negativity, shed the negativity, and keep your positive attitude up. All right? So let's say I'm coming to you and I'm complaining about my budget, and you want to tell me to? Shed, Shed up. up. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, for the rest of the day, we're going to declare mental enema day. All right? So if I come up to you and I say something negative, you want to tell me to? Shut up. All right, here we go, Wesley. So I've got a few of these bracelets. So who would like some, one of these bracelets? Let's see, we'll throw a few out. We got a whole bunch more that we'll throw out later. Ah, let's get back there. We'll get one here. And oh, I've got to stop by there. Got to give you that one there. All right, and one more over there, okay. All right, I got some more. We'll give some more. I'm allergic to negativity bracelets out. So, if you hear anybody at dinner time complaining about the food, you want to tell them to shut up. Shut up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now you're saying, well, Kat, that's kind of funny. Well, you would not believe what this does to transform workforces. I think the best example that I heard was from Mayo Clinic. The long-term healthcare part of Mayo Clinic decided that they were gonna make the I'm allergic to negativity wristbands as part of their uniform. So when you came to work, you had to have your badge and your wristband. Well, they were causing so much commotion that the internal newspaper at Mayo sent reporters and photographers down to their area and did a big spread in their internal newspaper of how they had stomped out negativity. Their employment and engagement scores doubled by a simple commitment from everybody to shed complaint. So I'm going to challenge you. Challenge you the rest of the day. I'm going to challenge you this may be one of the things you go back and share when you get back home. But it works. It magically works. And actually, we're going to give you, a, I'll, I'll give you a way at the end of this that you can actually download and get free mental enema guidelines and sign-up sheets. So you can take it back to work and have people sign, you know, that they will commit to keeping a positive, healthy workplace. Now, the third R of shedding is to refocus your energy. We are being asked to do more and more and more with what? Tony Swartz wrote a book, The Way We're Working Isn't Working. And in his book, he talks about we're coming to a point in time where, where the demands are outpacing the resources and how important it is for us to be able to recharge. Because managing energy is critical, critical for the future. Three different areas. The first is recharge management. The second is be in the now management. And the third is control management. Now, let's look at recharge management. We know that the average body oscillates every 90 minutes to two hours, and, and, and it needs a break. But most of us kind of ignore the signs. We just keep plugging on and ignoring the signs and work harder and harder and harder and we don't take those breaks. You know, I started my career as an ER trauma nurse. And the longer you could hold your bladder in the trauma room, the better nurse you were. I mean, what was that about? 
wasn't healthy. So we need to remember to recharge every 90 minutes to two hours. Now, in my Survival Guide book, I have 40 instant energy boosters that you can do at work all in five minutes or less. And research has shown that workforces that regularly encourage recharge have a increase in productivity and a decrease in sick time. It works. Play a game with them. Encourage recharge back at your workforce. Now, does anybody have a birthday today? Anybody? Back here, okay, all right, okay. Here's your birthday present. Let's give a hand, okay. All right, happy birthday. All right, you're, you're gonna get the survival guide book, so I tell you what, I'll meet you out at the Barnes and Noble book signing table and uh, I'll give it to you, there, your birthday present. Thanks, happy birthday. Lenny says, take care of your body. Where else are you going to live? And some of us know what it's like when we've seen people evict themselves from their own bodies because they didn't take care of them. The second is being the now management. Has anybody ever read the book, The Power of Now? There's probably about 20 of you in the room. Eckhart Tolle says in that book that 93% of our thoughts are repetitive and useless. 93%. He says that we're either worried about things that uh, may happen in the future, we're obsessed about things that happened in the past, and when we're at work, we're thinking about all the things we should do at home, when we're home, we're thinking about all the things we do at work, and we're never where we are. Wherever you are, be there. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and you're looking right at them and you're thinking, I have no idea what this person just said to me. <laughs> Yikes. Oh no. Maybe I can just shake my head and recover somehow. Oh, how embarrassing. We've all done it because 93% of the time we're somewhere else. So if you want to be a better energy manager, focus your energy on being in the now being in the present. Because with the shedding revolution, if you can manage the now, then you can manage the next now, and then the next now. Shedding is simple. Sometimes it's not easy, but it's simple. And my philosophy is not that it is going to take you 21 days to change a habit or 90 days to do this. It is manage the now, then the next now, then the next now. And if you make a healthy choice in the now, you will be in super shed mode. You will be employing a revolutionary shedding change management technique that very few people do. And it is that simple. And the third area is control management. In any situation, there's a spectrum of control. On this end, you've got full control. On this end, you've got no control. And somewhere in the middle, you've got some level of influence. Where do most of us waste our energy? On those things you can't control. So if you want to be a super shedder, if you want to be empowered with the shedding revolution, focus your energy on those things you can influence or control. Remember, with the shedding revolution, you always have a choice. It's the first key principle in the habit of those who are super shedders. You know, I gotta tell you, how many of you remember where I, I live? Anybody? Scottsdale, Arizona, exactly. All right, in Scottsdale, Arizona, in August, it can hit 120 degrees. 
very easily or above. And I know some places in Texas it gets up there hot too, doesn't it? Well, my neighbors, they can't live with it. So they leave. And they go off to Canada or Maine or Minnesota or anywhere that's cooler than Scottsdale, Arizona. So one of the first key principles to ask yourself is, can you live with this? Can you live with this? Can you live with this? And if you can't, then you say, okay, I've got to make a change. I've got to shed. I've got to do something different. One of the resources that we're going to give you at the end of this is an article. It's one of my, it is the most popular article that I've written. And it's how to lead change when you don't agree with it yourself. And the first key principle of it is asking, can you live with it? Is this against my morals or ethics? Is this a, is this, or is this just a mi minor inconvenience? And some of you may have to sit people that you work with down and ask them, can you live with this? If they can, tell them to shed the negativity and move forward. And if they can't, you may want to help them with other options. But you, if you haven't been asked to lead change and you don't agree with it, you'll need that skill set because it will become more and more needed in the future. There was a study done of HR professionals that found that only 17% of organizations have a strategy or plan to train or hire people that can embrace change. 17%. Think about that. You want your organization, your workforce to thrive? Put a plan in place to help people shed, to help people embrace change, to celebrate it in advance, and you will not only survive, you will thrive. So I'd encourage you to practice the three R's of shedding. Same with me together. The first is release the attachment. Second is reframe the situation, and the third is to refocus your energy. I'm going to ask you to practice these at home, practice them at work, practice them on the way to work. Let's say that you're on your way to work and you get a flat tire. Okay, so what do most of us say? <laughs> oh, shed. Oh, shed. Yeah, oh, shed. Oh, shed. Right, right, right. Oh, shed. Or something else. But let's just say they say, oh, shed. Um, so let's go through the three R's of shedding. Release the attachment. Well, you're not going to be at work for your 8 o'clock meeting. Now, some of you may go, woohoo, didn't want to be there anyway. But anyway, <laughs> let's say you did want to be there. So how do we reframe the situation? Well, I'm safe. I have a spare tire. I have cell phone. I got AAA. Yeah, right. So let's move to refocus your energy. So what are you going to do? Call work, tell them you're not going to be there for 8 o'clock meeting, and call AAA. Now, how long did it take to go through those three hours of chatting? Uh, about 60 seconds or less? But some of you, a flat tire would ruin your entire day. So I'm going to encourage you, you need to practice these. This is just building your shedding muscles. And the more you practice them, the stronger you'll be. And the more you help your workforce to practice them, the stronger they're going to be. If you have some what may be perceived as negative news, play the reframe game. Say for the next two minutes, okay, let's as a team sit down and say, what's the best reframe of the situation? And then reward whoever comes up with the best idea. It works. The question is, are you prepared? Are you ready? Do you have the skills and motivation to navigate the inevitable change? It's coming. It's not if, but when. It's not if the work crisis, it's when the work crisis. It's not if the personal crisis, it's when the personal crisis. And we need to be prepared with the skill set and we need to be able to teach other people this skill set. Let me share with you the bonus R of shedding. 
and that's to reward the behavior. Now, one of my clients who uses the shedding revolution is Verizon Wireless, and I'm sure a lot of you may have Verizon Wireless phones, um, and, and if you call into their call center, you may have somebody who's been trained in the shedding revolution. And so I went in and spoke to all their leadership. And they had me come back in three months to speak for them again. They wanted to work on some employee engagement, some accountability um, skills. So in between the three months, they decided to give away the Lenny Award. And the Lenny Award organizations give this away um, to reward people who embrace change and can shed. So um, in different organizations, some have it quarterly, some have it every six months. Verizon decides they wanted to give eight awards away in three months. So they had everybody nominated, and, and uh, I was in the back of the room by the exit sign, kind of like where you are back there, mister. And um, this guy received his award, and he came up in front of all his peers, accepted the Lenny Award, and he said, in the last three months, my job has been eliminated twice. I'm now on my third job. He said, look at all the new skills I'm learning. I just got the chills. What would it be like if everybody in your workforce had that kind of attitude about change? Wow. It would be transformational. So we encourage you to reward that behavior. Train people to embrace change. Change people to be able to adapt quicker and faster. So let's talk about how do you shed. Because everybody sheds in, in different ways. But, but there's actually four different styles in which most people fall into. One is the stabilizer, one's the hedger, one's the energizer, one's the driver. And the first letter of each one spells the word shed. And each one brings a different strength to the workforce. The stabilizer brings stability. The hedger brings order. The energizer brings enthusiasm. And the driver brings results. Now the problem is, we have a tendency to communicate with other people in our own preferred shed style. But when we do that, we are only 25% effective. That may have worked in the past, it won't work in the future. We've gotta be able to adapt our style to be 75% more effective. So let's do a quick little survey. Let's say that everybody in this ballroom was part of a core workforce, all right? So I'm gonna give you about five seconds. I want you to look up on the four shed styles. And this is without taking the instrument. It takes about five minutes to take the tool. But uh, I want you to give it a, your, your best guess on this, all right? So think about whether you would be a stabilizer, a hedger, an energizer, or a driver, okay? When I call the word, I'd like you to stand up for about five seconds and let's see the distribution of this team here, okay? All right, let's have all the stabilizers stand up. You think you're a stabilizer. Okay, maybe about 100, 125 people. Okay, thank you very much. All right, how about a hedger? If you think you're a hedger, stand up. Okay, maybe a couple hundred to two, three hundred people. All right, thank you very much. All right, if you believe that you are an energizer, stand up. <laughs> of course, all right, thank you energizers. All right, I think that was about 400, 500 people, that one. Um, all right, and if you believe you are in a driver, would you please stand up? Wow, wow, let's give him a hand. Excellent, excellent. I think the drivers may have hit a thousand people on that one. Now, if you took the actual instrument 
in the survival guidebook, you'd find that you have scores in each one. The stabilizer, hedger, energizer, end driver, all four of them. Because if you, if you didn't, you wouldn't be able to function at work or at home. But most of us have a preference that we like to bring to the team. Now the challenge with change is that we all deal with change in the styles in a different way. The stabilizer, out of all the styles, dislikes sudden change. Now, now think about that. What does the stabilizer bring to the team? Stability. So it would make sense uh, between them and the rest of the styles that they wouldn't like sudden change. So the strategy to adapt your style to become 75% more effective would be give the stabilizer as much notice as possible. Okay? Now sometimes you can't give as much as they may want, but sometimes you can give them more than you give them. So if you're going to change their work schedule, tell them it's going to happen in January 2026. <laughs> the stabilizers, once they are on board, they are the most loyal, the most team player, the most supportive of your, your entire workforce. They just need more notice. Hedgers. Hedgers like information and data. They just love it. They just can't get enough information and data. And with regards to change, they ask one question over and over again. And what's that? Why, 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 why are we changing? So, if you're dealing with a hedger, you want to come with more information. You want to come with more data. You want to come with the answer to the question, why? You want to come with the contract from the attorney. I don't know. <laughs> they just need more information and data than the rest of us. Now the energizers. The energizers, as you can tell, love change. I mean, some energizers that I've seen on really high scores, they don't even really care what the change is. <laughs> they just want to throw a party. I mean, I've never seen it. They're like, okay, what time's the party? I haven't even told you what the change is. <laughs> so if you've got a change going on, who do you want to get on board first? The energizers. Then you won't have to work as hard. Just let them do it. It's unbelievable the energizer they have. And the last is the drivers. Now the drivers drive change faster and quicker than any other style. They will leave the rest of us in the dirt. They just make change happen. And drivers have one theme song with regards to change. And that's, do it my way. <laughs> I know, there's a thousand drivers out here, right? Okay. So if you've got a, a, a driver you're dealing with, you know, you definitely want to get them involved with the change. And if you can make them think like it's their idea, <laughs> priceless. Now, how do you spell shed, everybody? S-H-E-D. And if one letter's missing, you can't shed. And if your team isn't working as efficiently as it could be, you could be missing a style or have an imbalance of styles. I just did an entire organization in California and it came back that 60% of their organization, of their workforce, was stabilizers. Aha, light bulbs from everybody going on. All the employees and the administration going, we're having so much problems with change. We can't get people to Shed, everybody, shed, 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 shed. And they just had an imbalance of styles. Every one of the styles is critically important. 
if you don't have the styles, you won't have a workable workforce. If, the, if everybody was a stabilizer, what would happen? Nothing may change. But if everybody was a stabilizer, I mean, if nobody was a stabilizer, what would happen? Chaos, absolute chaos. If everybody was a hedger, Ah, ah, analysis paralysis. But if nobody was a hedger, you may not have that organization that you need because nobody keeps in the quality and data. If everybody was an energizer, party, exactly. If nobody was an energizer, maybe boring, low morale, yeah. And what if everybody was a driver? Fights, fights, <laughs> I don't know, fights. But if nobody was a driver, the needed changes wouldn't be driven forward. So you need all styles, and you need to be able to adapt in and out of all styles very quickly, especially in the future. So now what? I mean, we've had some fun in this last hour together, and we're coming down to our last few minutes together. So now what? What have you learned? What are you going to share? What are you going to go live? You know, this is interesting. This came in on our email uh, a while back. It's a, it's a lizard, and we're going to give away some really cool lizards, too, in a few minutes. And it came from Shell Oil. And they sent us this email and said, it's been seven years since you've been here, and we still have our lizards on our computer to remind us every day to shed. The shedding revolution is about really reminding and giving you the resources. And so we're going to give you, we're going to help you kickstart your growth when you leave here. We're going to give you a lot of things, a lot of resources to leave here and go back and be able to share it and live it with your workforce. At your tables, you have two cards. You have a white card and a green card. It should be in the middle of the table. If every person would take a white card, it has Lenny on it, and a green card. Everybody needs a white and a green card. All right, if you'll take a pen out, and um, I'm going to actually have you write on the white card in just a minute. Uh, the white card is for you. It has your three R's of shedding. Learn it, share it, live it. On the back, it's got your shed styles. And it gives you one or two strategies that you can adapt your style to be 75% more effective. So you're going to have that right at your access. And we're going to have you fill out something of what you want to shed as we're coming to our closing few minutes together. You know, when I started my, whole, my, my career, I didn't have so many of these skills that we've talked about today. And it almost cost me my life. It was 1987, and life was good. It was a bright, sunny day, and I was at work at the phone rang. Dr. Ghazali? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, I'm just here giving the patient some medication. Sure, I'd be glad to take some test results. Mine? Are you sure? I'd just been given my death sentence, AIDS. You see, I was a nurse working in the emergency room, and a trauma patient came in, and we had a crack in this guy's chest, and my hands were wrist deep inside him, and I, and I happened to have a cut on my finger. And believe it or not, back in the mid-'80s, we didn't wear gloves. Well, the doctor said, calm down, we're going to run confirmatory tests. But weeks later, all the confirmatory tests also came back positive. Next thing I know, the CDC is involved, and I'm about to become their poster child. 
You see, I was the first healthcare worker in the United States to be tested positive from an on-the-job exposure. I sat down and mustered the courage to tell my boss. And she was so sympathetic, but said, Kathy, if this news gets out, this hospital will shut down. I'm sorry, but you can't work here anymore. I'm like, what? I can't do what I love to do. And then, and then I sat down and told some people in my church, and, and to my amazement, some of them alienated me. I could overhear them whispering. Should we even touch her? Well, as you imagine, I wasn't coping well. I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't exercising, I wasn't doing anything to recharge my energy or that we counsel people to do, especially during times of stress. But I wasn't prepared. I didn't have the skill set we talked about today. My lowest point was one night in graduate school. I arrived in class that night and heard, overheard the professor. Okay, folks, um, everybody take your seats. Uh, we're going to be watching a video called Living with AIDS. And for over an hour, I sat there, and I, I watched people waste away on that screen. My classmates, they were blown away with the disease. Little did they know who was sitting next to them. Well, I left class that night, and I determined one thing. I wasn't going to die that way. I determined I would choose how it would go. So I got in my car and my mind started racing. It was racing around a track called regrets. Regrets that I hadn't taken enough time for my family and friends. I was always too busy. Regrets that I hadn't taken the time to find out who Kathy Dempsey was. Well, I ended up in a hotel parking lot. And it was dark and rainy. And I just sat there. And I pulled a bottle of sleeping pills out of my purse. And two, four, six, eight. No, 10 won't do it. I've seen too many people survive on 10. I better take them all. Why well, was jolted back to reality with knocks on my car door window? Are you okay? No. I'm scared and I'm lonely. But this woman got in the car. And she held my hand, and she helped me get through the night. Oh, I've got to tell you that after that, you know, I, I, I was coping better, but I, I wasn't. I was still obsessed. I mean, talk about 93%, 99, 100% of my thoughts were consumed with my demise. I wasn't living in the now. Three months later, I was sitting in my living room watching my new TV set, and the phone rang. Guess who it was? The doctor. He said, Kathy, I'm not sure what to say, but all of your tests, all of them have come back negative. Like, woo! He said, you're not HIV positive. I thought, oh. Now, some people call that a medical error. Some people call it a miracle. That's what I call it. It was the best gift that anybody could have given me. I mean, all those results, all those regrets I had back in the car, now I could do something about them. It was like a VCR, and I got to push restart. So I wonder, what would you do? Would you have any regrets? 
what would they be? What, what picture comes to mind? Some of you may be sitting there thinking, you know, I used to hop out of bed. I couldn't wait to get to work. It gave me energy. Well, now it drains my energy. Some, some of you may say, you know, I've always wanted to go back to school. I wanted, I wanted to get a certificate. I wanted to get a, a bachelor's. I wanted to get a master's. I, I, I wanted to get a new skill set. Well, why wait? It's one of the best things that you can do to prepare for whatever happens. So some of you may say, I'm trying to control everybody and everything. And, and my employees and my staff and my colleagues and my boss and my spouse and my kids who aren't making the healthiest decisions. And it's... I mean, And some of you may say, I'm not taking care of myself. I'm not eating right. I'm not sleeping right. I'm not exercising. Some of you may say, nobody in this room has any idea what I'm going through. As we come to the close, I'm going to challenge you to take 60 seconds and write down one thing on the back of that card one thing that you want to shed, that you want to do different. When are you going to do it by? Who's going to be your support person? And what's the action step you're going to take? So I'm going to challenge you, 60 seconds at your tables, what will you shed? The back of the white card. And if you're serious about that action item, I'm going to ask you to check that box and sign the pledge to shed. So here's Lenny's 30-day challenge. I'm going to ask you as we close it up, and then we're going to have a really fun night, and we're going to have a uh, mental intima day that nobody's going to be complaining about anything. Um, we're going to have fun the rest of the evening. Uh, I'm going to ask you to take out your wallets. Uh, everybody take out your wallets, and actually take out your favorite credit card. Your fa you know you've got a favorite credit card, don't you? Yeah, yeah, okay, take it out. I mean, we've done some crazy things. Take out your credit card. All right. Now, um, Larry told me we're going to be collecting these. Um, that was what I was supposed to say, right? Okay, no. Um, so here's Lenny's 30-day challenge, if you'll put it up on the screen. And that is for the next 30 days to put your What Will You Shed Today card in front of your favorite credit card for the next 30 days. So every time you pull out your favorite credit card, which some of you it's going to be a lot more than others, you'll be reminded of what you've agreed to shed. So if you're willing to do that, would you raise your hand? That's like 98% of you. Woohoo! Awesome. Give yourself a hand. Wow, 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 wow. Awesome. So as we said, the Shedding Revolution is about reminders and it's about resources. And that your little green card there, if you haven't had time to fill it out yet, if you will fill that out, we will send you the link to get all the articles, the PDFs of the book, the poster, uh, the mental intimate guidelines, the sign-up sheet, you'll get everything. And it will actually come in an email from Lenny the Lizard. So I promise you, it will be the only one that comes in your box from a lizard. And if you don't like it, you can shed it. Um, but uh, anyway, if you'll fill that out, that green card out. On the back, we're doing research on biggest, greatest challenge. And then if you give us a sentence on how this session helped you. Because it's our desire, as we continue to launch the shedding revolution, to be able to help organizations and workforces continue to shed faster and quicker and thrive more. So if you're, t if you're filling out that green card, we're going to ask you to leave it in the center of the table. If one person will be responsible for making sure the stack is on the center of the table, and then that one person at the end, if you'll come down and bring the green stack and put it on the platform here. What we're going to do tonight 
is we're going to call some names out and we're going to give some really fabulous prizes. We're going to give entire shed team kits with has uh, assessment tools in it and books and resources and stuff that you can just take back and use in your workforce. So we'll be pulling those cards and we're gonna give those away tonight at the six o'clock hour when the rest of the prizes are gonna be given away. So again, one person at your table, if you'll grab everybody's card and then bring it down to the front right stage here. 